Well, welcome again to Thought for the Day, where we come to our final piece in the story of the God of Abraham. We come to Genesis chapter 25 and verses 1 to 11. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we pray that yet again we may see you in these pages. That we may wonder again, Lord, at the God of Abraham, that you are still the same yesterday, today and forever. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 25, verses 1 to 11. 11. Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokthan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak and Shuar. Jokthan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Lechusites and the Lumites. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephah, Hanak, Abidah and Eldar. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac, but while he was still living he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Altogether Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, the field Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Beer Lehi Roi. So the biblical narrative switches back to Abraham, having focused on Isaac through the previous chapter. And as we come to the close of the Abraham narrative, there are two things I'd like us to focus on. The first regards Abraham, the faithful life. Not, of course, that Abraham was always faithful, but the trajectory of his life from leaving Ur of the Chaldeas in back in chapter 11 to his death here in chapter 25 shows an onward walk of faith with God. Faith to go where God led, faith to trust and believe what God said. And Abraham's life has been a life in the promises based on the promises of God. Promises of land, of children, but most preciously of salvation itself. And at the close of this life of faith, verse 8 tells us that he died and was gathered to his people. So what does that mean? Who are his people? Well, surely they are the heavenly company of all those who had believed in God and followed him. That Abraham is gathered to Seth, to Jared, to Enoch, to Methuselah, to Noah, the truly godly of previous generations, what the writer to the Hebrews will later call the Church of the Firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, the spirit of righteous men made perfect. And as Matthew Henry writes, those that are our people while we are here on earth, whether the people of God or the children of this world, are the people to whom death will gather us. And that is a sobering thought. But we mustn't end on the faithful life, but rather on the faithful God, the God of Abraham, the God revealed to Abraham and therefore to us in these chapters of Holy Scripture. Because this most of all is not a story of Abraham, it's a story of Abraham's God. The God who's been revealed to us in these chapters as God Most High, the Sovereign Lord, Lord Almighty, the God who sees me, the Eternal God, the God who provides. And even in these final verses, we see more evidence of our faithful God. And so in verses 7 and 8, we read that Abraham lived 175 years. He breathed his last and died at a good old age. Back in chapter 15, God had promised Abraham, you will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. Promise kept. And in verse 11, 
We read, and after Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac. Exactly again what God had promised to Abraham back in chapter 17. God is faithful. God keeps his promise. And even that genealogy in the first four verses of this chapter reminds us too of the promises God had made to Abraham back in chapter 17 when he said, I will make you very fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Promise kept. As Dale Ralph Davis puts it, God has left his fingerprints of his faithfulness all over the scriptures. And so as we close these chapters on the God of Abraham, the two big questions, am I, are you living that daily life of faith, going where God leads, trusting what God says in his holy word, the scriptures? And do I and do you know the God of Abraham, the faithful God, to be your God? Do you trust him wholly and completely from birth to death, and for everything in between and for everything beyond. I pray that you do. Let's pray. The God of Abraham prays, who reigns enthroned above, ancient of everlasting days and God of love, who was and is the same and evermore shall be, Jehovah Lord, the great I am, we worship thee. Lord, may those words be the songs of each of our hearts and may we praise you more and more for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>